Hello, PowerMation YouTube. My name is Meldia Sina, and I'm a technical sales associate. And today I'm joined by Lance Waffensmith, who is the business development manager at PowerMation for Pneumatic Products. We are here today to talk to you about the new Festo proximity switch. Lance, will you give us a little info? I'd love to. Thanks, Meldia. I um, am presenting a new sensor from Festo. They've released a self teaching proximity sensor for their pneumatic air cylinder products and it's something I don't think anybody has seen before so I wanted to showcase it and let everyone know what's new. Uh, that you'll find in addition to the sensor I'm also talking about their compact ADNS cylinders and the flow controls they've recently released all of which can be found in their essentials brochure and online in their essentials section. So can you tell us all the components that make up this assembly? Sure. So these three items you'll find in this Essentials brochure. I'm going to be focusing primarily today on this new self-teaching sensor that Festo's released. I'm going to touch a little on their ADNS compact air cylinder, which happens to be the most compact in the industry. And then they have locking flow controls, one-way flow controls with color identification on them. I'll go over them as well. Awesome. Can you point those out on the uh, second camera demo as well? Sure. Okay, so this sensor is the SDBT-MSX. I'll slide into frame here. And the magic behind this is it self-teaches its position. So uh, as you, get, you may be aware, if you've ever set one of these up, traditional switches you have to mechanically move them into position. What this one will do is with upon four consecutive strokes it teaches the position retain that for the rest of its life. In addition you can open up that sensing window and so forth. So, so Lance before you show us how to set up the sensor as far as teaching it Will you show us the actual physical installation of this sensor on a cylinder? Absolutely. <clears throat> All you need, one and a half millimeter Allen key. And there's a little wedge, just like mo the majority of T-slot sensors have now. There's this little rotary uh, latch that will lock it in all the standard Festo T-slots. So whether it's this ADNS, their, their older uh, ADN series, DSNU, you go down the board, anything with a T-slot and a magnet, this, this will work with. Okay, so if we are close enough to the power supply and we don't need additional connectivity, you can install this with just your hands and that wrench, right? There's absolutely no other, uh, no other tools needed to get this into place? Nope, that's it. That's all you need. Matter of fact, well, one of the, the beauty behind this sensor is if you look uh, scribed within Festo cylinders, they'll have two little hatch marks that are laser etched. Mm. Those represent the end of travel of the magnet. So within this cylinder, there's a magnetic piston, and those are there for you as, as a setup guy to know as long as I get this little, uh, this line here represents the full sensing range of the cylinder. As long as that lands on the line and you tighten it down, you're good to go. So the idea being tighten that down, don't need to power it up, get all your sensors set, and then once the machine starts up, it just runs and you don't really need to worry about it. It's hands off set up. That's awesome. Um, so with the physical setup out of the way, will you show us how to teach the sensor? Love to, yep. Okay, so when it's received from the factory, it's going to be in its ready to learn uh, state. You know, it's ready to be taught. Uh, the way it behaves is after four consecutive strokes to the same position, you'll see that green light and the yellow. Now it's taught. So drop power, bring it back online, it's ready to go. Now it's been taught, it'll forever remember that 
spot. Even through a loss of power like you just demonstrated. Yep. So that is really cool to see you do it by hand here now, but will that same teaching method work under load? It will. Matter of fact, that's one of the benefits. A lot of these cylinders will have elastomer cushions within them or bumpers, and those compress more and more as force is uh, applied. So the beauty of this is you run your machine under normal pressure and that compression happens during the setup and really narrows in on the optimal sensing area. So you get a perfect, um, it, it, the, the sensing elements are right in the strongest part of the magnet upon power or when it's powered. Uh, in addition, a couple other features to talk about that are, are, are worthy. The, you can increase that sensing window. So you'll notice here, by default, the window is, very, is two millimeters. So okay. very short distance. This was the one that we just taught. And that's a typical sensing window for a lot of these cylinders. Uh, it, it's small and narrow, which is by design, a lot of people want that. But if you have an application where um, let's move this back right out of the range here. But if you have an application where you need a, a wider window, you can see I programmed this one so the window was eight millimeters. And so you can see there that there's a lot longer travel. And that's just a series of button presses. You can go all the way out to 15 millimeters. So from a two millimeter minimum can increase by one millimeter increments out to 15. You can also re reprogram it for normally open, normally closed. It can be PNP or NPN. So it's a very universal switch. For OEMs, you just stock one and it can do everything. So I noticed you said programming, but really this is all just teaching the sensor with the button on the face of the sensor, correct? There's no actual software to program this? Correct. Or more of a, just a setup. Just a single capacitive button that you'll notice is right there. There's a small bump on it. Nice. So uh, this seems really precise. Are there any applications that you feel really lend themselves to this sort of setup? So um, the, the, the widening of that sensing window can be huge for some applications. I love that about it. Uh, if you have a large number of cylinders on a machine, there's some machines that you may have 10, 20 different cylinders. They may be, maybe they're all compact, you have a mix. You know, if you have, let's just use the number 10, if you have 10 cylinders, that's 20 switches. If you can just go in there and set them all before power up, the setup time is greatly reduced. You know, it's just a time saver, huge time saver. Okay, and then, so you, we mentioned that that's a great application for the sensor, but I'm curious about these cylinders since you mentioned they're basically the most compact on the market. Um, where do you see these really small cylinders being used most often? So compacts, they're, uh, they're great for shorter travel. Mm -hmm. It's the longest you'll see, you know, range from here, you're looking at the book here, if we just look at the stock, the longest is 50 millimeters on their end the stock. Mm -hmm. And then they have a five millimeter minimum. So you, Two That's inches. Really small. They're little. Yeah. So, but fit in tight places. So you, you'll see them in, um, you know, maybe little clamping applications, pinching, pressing, uh, where you need to fit in a very tight space. S mounting. You'll notice you, they have through hole or they're threaded. So you, you know, very universally um, friendly as far as mounting goes. Anywhere, you just need. Uh, a shorter travel pushing okay. force, no, no, no side load. These don't like, a lot of compacts don't handle the side loads. They're very short, so they're, the nose bearing is shorter. If you need side load on your cylinder, you'd go to something else, a different, a different technology. And then moving away from the cylinders back to the sensors, how are we doing on stock for these? To the essential side of things, the idea here on their these products, they star them on the website. So inventory on all of these start items is really what, really good. And in this case, they make them by machinery in Germany and inventory them here in the States 
in huge numbers. So this book lays out exactly what the inventoried items are and kind of details it, illustrates it for you. And online you can find that same, that same stuff. So the inventory is good across the board on all of these, including their flow controls. Well, Lance, thank you so much for all the information and your walkthrough today. We really appreciate it. No problem. Well, we are giving away 10 of these proximity switches, so you can find a link in the description to get one of these for free. If you don't want to leave it up to chance, we also have links in the description where you can contact us to purchase one of these proximity switches, as well as links to all of the catalogs mentioned in this video today. Thank you for your time, and we hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe to the PowerMation YouTube channel. Thank you.